The sun beats down and brings the tar up on the roof. And your shoes get so hot, you wish your tired feet were fireproof. Under the boardwalk, down by the sea. Thank you, would you be seated?
that was one of Helen's favourite songs, Under the Boardwalk by Beck Midler. Good afternoon and welcome as we come together as family, friends and community to celebrate and to give thanks for the life of a very special lady, Helen Margaret Leather. There are in life the givers and the takers. Helen was one of the most generous, kind-hearted givers it has been my privilege to know. She would do anything for anyone and not expect a thing in return. A rare gift in today's world. The family really appreciates your attendance today and also the help and assistance they have received from everyone. They issue a cordial invitation to all to join them at the Marinda Hotel to share your memories of Helen following her interment in Bowen Cemetery. Before we begin today's service, could I please ask you to ensure your mobile devices are either switched off or are silent, please? The family thanks you for this courtesy. You'll find the restrooms located at the back of the chapel and there is a water cooler near the front entrance. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Vicki Menzies and it is my privilege and honour to lead today's service. Please feel free to let those tears flow as we show this lady just how much she touched the lives of so many people. To some, to cry is to show weakness. However, it is my belief that it also shows the deep respect and love in which we hold our loved one. Would you please bow your head as we pray the opening prayer. O oh God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Helen, whom you've called out of this world. Command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy eternal rest. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our deepest sympathy goes out today to Doug, Natalie and Ricky, Rebecca and Luke, Lane, Emma, Taylor, Ryan, Georgia, Mia, Layla, Bronte and Bridget, as well as the extended Leather and Finler families. To begin our service, we will light four candles in Helen's honour. As each candle is lit, I will explain what will happen. Could I ask the grandchildren please to come forward? All of you. I don't have a good record with matches, so that's why I handed them over very quickly. Bridget will light the candle for our memories. There is so much we remember. Your smile, your laugh, the good times and the bad. When we were happy, all those times that could never have been lived with anyone but you. We want you to know that we will always remember your generous and kind heart. <laughs> Obviously, we don't have any <laughs> Layla will light a candle for our determination. Knowing you has brought us strength and we are changed because of you. Your life has made a difference in our lives. We want you to know that we will take the energy of your living 
to help us move forward in our own lives. Ryan will light the candle for our sadness. The pain of losing you is intense and the grief we feel is often hard to handle. We want you to know that we miss you so much, but we know you are at peace. Lane, your turn. <laughs> Lane will light this candle for our love. The love that we shared with you can never be replaced. Our love for you will shine as brightly as this candle. We will pass that on to others and as we do, our hearts will smile because of you. We want you to know that we will always love you. Now we're going to hear some spoken tributes from the... Blessed are those who see beauty where others see nothing at all. This was our mama. Last words I said to you was, if I knew they were my last, I wouldn't have just said I love you. I would have hugged you so very tight. I remember when you looked after me when I was sick, even when I was baking. I tried my extreme best to repay that to you. You taught me so many things, so, so I was proud of myself. I hope you were proud of me too. This was not good enough for your beautiful soul. I hope... I hope where you are now in peace is so much better. I will have so much to talk to you about when I see you again. Oh my god. A passage highlighted by Momo in her little book of virtue. Bring it up. Too tall. Life brings pain. Pain of heart, pain of body, pain of soul. It also brings joy. Childlike abandon, youthful laughter, mature appreciation of the splendours life has to offer. Ache brings depth and richness to the other. When we have experienced pain, we can savour more fully the relief of joy. When we carry fulfilling memories in our heart, we have the strength to endure through adversity. Both joy and suffering help us through the cycles of our lives. I'm a bit short. A passage highlighted by Momo in her little book of virtue. I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good thing, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness that I can show to my fellow creature, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I cannot pass this way again. A passage highlighted by Momo in her book of virtue. Accept for today what you cannot change, and in that acceptance... Lay plans for the future. Acceptance is an active, not passive virtue. True acceptance takes tolerance and courage. It enables us to glean what is valuable for our present circumstances. By accepting our situation, we can see it realistically and share with others what we have learned. Accepting what life brings will lighten the emotional load we carry into the future and brighten our todays.
Thank you, Lane, Emma, Taylor, Ryan, Georgia, Mia, Layla, Bronte, Bridget, Mama would have been so proud of you. While the family has been reflecting, they came across a book of Helen's called How to Make Someone's Day by Kathy Peel. Helen had bookmarked the following. A pleasant companion reduces the length of a journey. If a friend is in crisis or sick, offer to provide regular help over the long haul. Maybe dinner once a week. Helen was a wonderful friend and deservingly she was blessed to have some loyal ones right round her until the end to help her along her journeys. Before I invite her dear friend Rhonda to speak, the family would like to share a message written by Helen seven years ago that she left for all her friends. To my friends, you know who you are and to my carers, through thick and thin, you were there for me. You were lovely to me. Trust your friends to do something forever. I appreciate ate everything you did for me. You were such good friends. Rhonda, I would now like you to come forward, please. Helen and I attended Mount Isa State High School and joined the workforce at MIM in 1971. The best jobs we ever had. Mini skirts were in then and we both rode big trail bikes to work with our skirts taped to the petrol tanks. How we managed to change gears with our platform shoes is a mystery. When we left MIM, we realised you really had to work for a living. When Helen moved to Bowen as Doug's wife, she became a country girl with all the knowledge that went with that. And she could instruct anyone on the right way to do something or explain to us the intricacies of AI. Helen was also a very caring person. In 2011, she joined our Relay for Life team. In 2012, she organised a lunch at the Cove and gave us each a rose and perfume with a note which said, there are certain friends in my life who I always feel close to. We may not see each other often, but we seem to be able to pick up where we left off. You accept me unconditionally. You are one of those special friends for me. I love you. Over the last six years, a group of Helen's girlfriends met with her on a weekly basis, mainly coffee in town, with the occasional trip to Airlie. These trips away were a scream and we really let our hair down. On one trip, Helen bought us all face masks. So here we all are, sitting in our apartment, guzzling champagne, eating cheesecake and looking absolutely stunning with our face masks on. We had lots of laughs. Our visits continued to Helen's place where we were always made very welcome by Helen's carers. She was fortunate to be cared for by people who loved her, Cindy and all the other special ladies, and of course, Doug. 
Helen was always able to give us a smile despite her circumstances. We could tell by her eyes that she was ready to go and we say, fly free, sweet, brave lady. I speak on behalf of Helen's girlfriends and we offer our sincere sympathy to Doug, Nat, Beck and families. Thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. Would Nat and Beck please come forward and share Helen's life story with us? The world became a better place on 14th of June, 1955, when Helen Margaret Fenelow was born in Mount Isa Hospital to her mother Jenny Ellen and father Yura Oscari, affectionately known as George. Helen completed the Fenelow family, joining her older brothers Mark, Marty and Eric. When Helen was being brought home from the hospital, Mark saw Eric from the front yard looking through the louvers at Atherton Street and yelled out, what you looking for? Eric replied, I'm looking for the stork bringing my baby sister home. To which Mark replied, don't be silly, she's coming home in a taxi with mum. Helen's family had moved to Australia from Finland in 1951, where they connected with many other Finnish families in Mount Isa and her father worked in the mine. Neither of Helen's parents could speak English at the time. Helen grew up in Atherton Street from her birth in a home built by her family below the cross on the hill. The family then moved to the Mineside House in First Street and later bought and lived in the Hecklers House in Hillary Street when they moved away before returning to Atherton Street. Helen was a loving daughter to her parents and doting little sister to her brothers. She always spoke so affectionately about her childhood. She loved going to Cloncurry, Mary Kathleen and East Leichhardt for picnics and a day's outing. Going to the Gregory Fishing, going to the BSD Picture Theatre Under the Stars and having barbecues at Lake Mandara. She also spoke often of her childhood memory of listening to Dexter Dutton and the mystery half hour on the radio and her and Eric using rolled up comics to squash mosquitoes onto the walls. She loved to read Contiki Expedition and comics played in the Fife Band and reminisced about precious childhood memories like hill climbing, riding her bike, going to fancy dress balls, playing games like Blinds Man's Bluff, the cut-out paper dolls that you changed outfits on, and her favourite, her walking bride doll. He couldn't, no, Helen couldn't speak English well when she started school and didn't know the traditional Australian children's songs that they would sing, so it was quite hard for her to fit in, but she adapted. She was an above average student and enjoyed her school days where she shared, which she shared with friends like Kay Clues, Rhonda Cole, Sirka Nyemanen, Anna Heckler and Rhonda Nelson. Helen's brother Eric tells the story of how one day his friend came running up the street all panicked, telling Eric to come quickly as Helen and her friend Kay were bashing up two boys at the playground. When Eric arrived, the two boys were up on the monkey bars with the girls waiting for them underneath. He isn't sure what it was all about, but they sure look scared of the girls. Helen left school at 15 and worked in the Mount Isa Mines office. This is where her friendship with Rhonda Nelson really deepened as they shared a tiny office together, along with all the ups, downs and special memories during this time. In 1974, Helen travelled to Bowen to stay with her uncle and aunt on their Lucent farm, where she first met Doug. Both her and Doug tell the best stories of their first meeting at a Christmas party. 
Mum tells of being spun around on a swivel chair by two small children at the party, and when they stopped abruptly, she was directly facing Doug, and their eyes met across the party. Doug tells of how he loved her from the first time he saw her. And after boldly introducing himself and securing a future date, he returned to the friends he was with and said, I'm going to marry that girl. Doug and Helen stayed in touch through letters and had a couple of visits before Helen moved to Bowen to live with Dad. Prior to meeting Doug, Helen... Sorry, I can't see... Prior to meeting Doug, Helen had applied to join the Navy. However, when she received her acceptance letter, Doug promptly proposed and she accepted his proposal, that is. <laughs> Helen and Doug were married in Mount Isa on the 10th of January, 1976. And so began a wonderful life together where they worked very hard on the farm but then played hard with so many great friends. We refer to them as the glory days. The balls, Friday nights at the Grand View, Boxing Day at Venards, New Year's Days at Collinsville, camping trips to Sunset Beach and Stewart Creek, the show and Brahman dinners, and so many more times spent building lifelong friendships. Helen was a loyal and considerate friend who earned many wonderful friendships with people from all walks of life. She was loved by many, and we say she never made an enemy, only friends. In 1977, Helen gave birth to her beloved son, Ben. He arrived very early, and although describing her feelings of not knowing what to do as a new mother, Helen was the very best. Two years later, Natalie was born, followed by myself another six years after. Helen was a devoted and loving mother. The very best a child could hope for. Let's see. She gave her kids a childhood that they hold so fondly in their memories. She did everything she could to give her kids the best life, but also raised them with firm values and kept them accountable. She was so loving and so much fun to have as your mum. Many of her own kids and grandkids' friends also think of her and call her mum and mumu. The birth of her grandson, Lane, began another wonderful chapter of Helen's life. All the love and fun that she brought could now be passed on to the next generation. She loved every one of her grandchildren unconditionally with the force of a thousand sons. She was so incredibly proud of them all and literally couldn't get enough of them. Helen was just so considerate. She did for you what you couldn't do for yourself, especially as adults. Helen knew what her daughters needed to help them and make them happy without them even saying. After trips away or coming home from hospital after giving birth, Helen would have a meal and dessert cooked, fridge stocked, the other children looking like angels and the girls' homes immaculate, with new furnishings and often rearranged, but looking so much more stylish and put together than when they left. This extended to the grandchildren in that any time the kids needed anything at all, Helen would take them for a drive and arrive back with everything without ever being asked. Helen's best friend Rhonda couldn't believe her eyes when she first visited Helen after she moved to the farm and saw her among the cattle. The transformation from city girl, yes, Mount Isa was a city, to grazier, farmer and country homemaker was seamless. She tells of how Helen just appeared as though she had grown up in the farm environment. 
This is but one example of how Helen fully embraced everything she wanted to do. Whatever the task, if Helen wanted to do something, she would learn how to do it properly, giving respect to tradition and showing incredible attention to detail in everything she did. Helen had an innate ability to give her absolute best in anything she tasked herself with. On top of this, she also had the most incredible creativity, so was able to add her own flair to make it her own. Helen shared memories of her father loving to invent things. This imagination and resourcefulness was also one of Helen's most notable traits. Inventing and making costumes for her children and grandchildren, as well as other people's children and grandchildren, was one of her favourite things to do. Hats for the races, impeccably decorated birthday parties, home decor, Christmas decorations, you name it, and Helen could make it. She just loved creating things that made people smile. And so many times people would say to her, how did you come up with that? If she wanted to create something, she found a way. Whether it be creating Christmas light jellyfish hanging from our mango trees made out of crab dillies, or a rooster's tail for a dance costume made out of some reeds she had in a vase in the house for decoration. Helen was so impressively innovative. She loved sewing and always had an eye for style with her fashion. She could easily visualise designs and put a whole look together to emulate the latest trends. Many of her outfits look like they could have come from a high-end fashion label. With her creativity also came a fierce independence. Helen never relied on anyone to teach or do things for her. She was self-taught in so many of her creative outlets and quietly figured things out for herself. The most recent memory of this was Helen's ability to construct professional quality decorative cakes for which she never wanted to take money, even when she had worked for weeks on end making all the fondant decorations. Her cake making fused her love of cooking with her ability to be innovative and we remember her excitement when she enrolled to take a cake making course in Proserpine. This allowed her to take it to the next level, to bring more technical skill to her abundant natural talent. Helen was a capable woman with a strong work ethic. She could speak, read and write Finnish fluently, even assisting immigrants at the bank by interpreting for them. Helen was involved in a number of committees over the years. Her heaviest involvement was as secretary and treasurer for the North Queensland branch of the Australian Brahmin Breeders Association. Helen held a number of jobs over her life, all the while working on the farm and running a loving home for her family. After leaving Mount Isa, Helen worked briefly at McGee's supermarket before going into the family small crops and grazing business. Helen worked the farm for years and raised the children before returning to paid work at Delta Produce briefly, Queensland Pork for several years doing their breeding records, and then the ANZ Bank. Helen had a real affinity with animals. Growing up, she loved her family pets, eight cats, the dogs Reko and Peppy, and her pig Blondie. She also loved riding her friend Marita's donkey, Sleepy. Shortly after moving to Bowen, Jimmy Smith gave Helen a baby cockatoo that had fallen out of its nest. Helen raised it on Uncle Toby's oats, so named her Toby. That cockatoo loved Helen, and literally no one else. In her life, Helen had too many cats and dogs to name that she always cared tenderly for. Helen was very involved with the cattle at Wooden Bend, especially in showing the Brahmin cattle. Her family have many memories of her leading, grooming and tending to cattle with immeasurable patience and persistence. She always made sure to show her children how to do it as well. She had such a special bond with her cattle where they would recognise and come gently to her even after lengthy periods of time. Helen was a fine sportswoman and an avid sports supporter. She played softball for Mount Isa for many years, as well as being a dedicated swimmer, training twice a day, and playing basketball, netball, and Finnish baseball. Helen was also an excellent water skier. 
Her love and involvement in sport then transferred to supporting Doug and the kids in their endeavours. She scored countless games of cricket for Ben and Doug's club and representative teams over the years, and her score sheets were immaculate. Helen also supported Nat and Beck in their netball and volunteered generously to the Bowen Netball Association, where she was recently made a life member and also honoured with a plaque for her selfless work in the canteen. Every other sport that her kids played, she supported them fully and gave, them t gave her time endlessly. When Nat and Beck started dancing, Helen was in her element as she could combine her loves of her children, music and creativity. She made so many amazing costumes and props over the years. The dancing years also provided Helen with so much laughter, camaraderie and friendship alongside the other mums. When the grandchildren arrived, Helen was the first to volunteer to be at lessons, concerts or representative trips to support them. She continued to do this for as long as she physically could, even if she was uncomfortable. Helen describes her own mother as a very good cook and inherited her mother's love and skill for cooking. Dishes like bulla, limpo, pirikas and maxolatico. She embraced her Finnish heritage, making many traditional dishes. However, she also loved to learn and experiment with new things. The spread of food at any event hosted by Helen was mouth-watering. Helen was the hostess with the mostess. Any event hosted by her was certain to be visually beautiful, witty and an absolute hoot. She was a curator of fun. She just loved to make other people happy and see them enjoy themselves. Brahmin dinners, the Christmas party, kids' birthday parties, and even just a plain old barbecue, no matter the size or type of event, she would give it her full effort to ensure it was memorable for everyone. Even during the hard years, mum would not blink at spending money to ensure family and friends would have a great time. She was never afraid to use the fine china. Helen loved to travel and would have loved to do a whole lot more if she had the chance. Even though she hadn't travelled a lot, she was extremely worldly. She was very observant and open to everyone she met and loved picking up new knowledge. Her experiences when travelling provided her with different ideas to use in her own life. Two memorable trips for Helen as a child were when she travelled to Canberra in her dad's old Zephyr and when she went to Finland with her mum and dad when she was 13. She travelled overseas to England where she was a bridesmaid for her sister-in-law Grigal and Mark's wedding and then continued travelling with Marty, including time in Munich at the time of the Olympics. Helen also loved her honeymoon in Tasmania with Doug. As the years went on, trips within Australia became a love of Helen's. She delighted in travelling to Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne for stage shows, sporting events, especially the Australian Open Tennis and special occasions. Whilst on holidays, Helen loved to shop and dined out at fine restaurants. She was just as comfortable in the fanciest restaurant as she was camping down the creek. Helen enjoyed and would adapt to any situation and own it. Too many camping trips to mention, however, one special trip to Weeper alongside the Nelson family was a clear favourite. On top of all the general fun of any holiday, Helen went the extra mile, creating additional fun for the families by organising talent displays at night and coming up with awards and prizes for everyone at the end of the trip. Helen's final holiday was one she had always wanted to do, a cruise. She had an absolute ball, despite already being restricted by her illness. So much laughter and fun was had with her daughters on this special trip. 
No one could think of my mum and not think of Christmas. She loved it and spent so much time and effort decorating her home and yard for others to enjoy. She only liked to have the best quality or traditional handmade decorations in the house. However, she made an exception for the occasional singing or farting plush toy that made her grandchildren laugh. We like to say that Christmas was in Helen's DNA. Her heritage from her was from the traditional home of Santa Claus in Lapland. Christmas to Helen was all about celebrating life with her nearest and dearest and sharing laughs, gifts, tradition and love. The fond memories of her at Christmas will be with us all forever and her traditions will no doubt pass down, not just through her family, but also to many who were blessed to enjoy Christmas with her. Despite telling childhood stories of her brothers scaring her when her parents went to the Finnish Hall and how she was terrified of the scary-looking sanitary man who used to come and empty their thunderbox, Helen was extremely brave. This bravery shone through when she lost her only son, Ben, and fought through the sadness to ensure everyone kept going. She had a strong sense of social justice and didn't like anyone speaking down about others, always seeing the good in people. She was never afraid to stand up to even the most intimidating opponent and stand up for what was right. Her courage and determination was beyond measure especially in the last 10 years. The hardest part for Helen and her strong, close family when they found out about Helen's diagnosis was being told there is no way to beat it, no matter how hard you try. The absence of hope for someone who was such a fighter. Helen had a brilliant sense of humour and kept it right to the end. Every now and then, you would see it shine through in a smirk or even just in her eyes. She always laughed when the grandkids would jokingly make fun of Pop and she loved watching Poppy Cat get all stirred up. Helen was the heart of her family end of their home. <laughs> when she left this world last Monday, the house felt as if it literally held its breath and was immediately in mourning. Helen lived her life to make others happy and would give anyone the shirt off her back if they needed it. Her generous nature will ensure that her legacy lives on through her family and friends, to whom she passed on all that she could in her short but full life. Thank you, Nat and Vic. You did Mum proud. What wonderful memories we have and I urge you all to share them with Helen's family. Just because Helen is no longer here with us, don't be afraid to speak her name. Let's all recall the wonderful times you shared with her and her family. It helps them to know that Helen really did leave footprints in your lives. While we watch a music, uh, photo presentation, of Helen's life, we'll hear two songs, Elton, your song by Elton John and I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Arrowsmith. Please sit back and watch. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid 
of the dark At the end of a storm There's a golden sky And the sweet silver song of a love Walk on through the wind Walk on through the rain For your dreams be tired Stay awake just to hear you breathing. Watch you smile while you are sleeping. While you're far away dreaming, I could spend my life in this sweet surrender. I could stay lost in this moment forever. Moment spent with you is a moment I treasure. Yeah.
If there is anyone else who would like to come forward and share their memories, would you please come forward now? If you feel too emotional, please make certain that you share the, your stories with the family at a later date. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and share some memories? Okay. If I appear repetitive in my praise of Helen, I'll make no excuses for it. Helen had a heart of gold and I'm sure it was as wide and as deep as an ocean. And as the girl said, she loved Christmas. Anyone who has ever attended a Warden Bend Christmas party will know I'm not overstating Helen's love of Christmas. White tablecloths and china, plus a menu fit for a king, all prepared by Helen and Doug. What a delight to see Helen's Christmas decorations. They were incredible and they changed every year. Wonderful memories made in the company of relatives and friends. How many of you have been fortunate enough to taste Buller? A finished treat prepared for special occasions. It's the little things that mean so much. Our Bible reading today comes from Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 and 29 and it reads, Come unto me, all you who, are, who labour and are heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. 
These verses reassure us that the Lord Jesus will take up our burdens for us and give us peace. This is where you'll find Helen, at rest and at peace. I would now like to ask you all to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer, asking for strength to face the days ahead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Family and friends, it's now time for us to take Helen to her resting place in Bowen Cemetery alongside her son, Ben. I ask you, would you please make your way as quickly as possible to the cemetery as we have a time limit for the burial? Thank you most sincerely for this courtesy. Helen's family thanks everyone for their attendance today. To those who have travelled to be with us, thank you and we wish you a safe journey home. I'll now extinguish the candles before we call the pall bearers forward. Please be upstanding as we carry Helen's casket from the chapel. I would only be in your way So I would But I know I'll think of you Every step of the way And I will always love you I'm taking with me so goodbye please don't cry we both know I'm not what you you need Treat you kind, and I hope you have 